Everybody shout, God said, God said live. live. Hallelujah. Father, may we do no damage, but preach that which becometh sound doctrine and gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord to all of us tonight. I'm going to pray a live anointing on you. God's going to bless you for what you sold. God's going to bless you for what you gave. But the Lord had this in store for you long before the offering. God says, I'm going to release something tonight. And it's going to bless homes. It's going to bless churches. It's going to bless districts and regions. God said, tell them that I said, live. To me to the chief of staff, to the administrative assistants, to the superintendents, to the jurisdictional secretary, to the pastors and elders, to the supervisor, to the first lady, the missionaries, and to the laity, to the regions and to the districts. Yes, even to the local churches tonight, the word from the Lord is live. Let's take a look at what the God of the Bible said to them and is saying to us. Just a little background, and if you say amen, I'll move right along. The prophet priest Ezekiel, who along with Jeremiah and Zechariah, were both prophet and priest. Only Jeremiah and Zechariah had that distinction. And uh, Ezekiel received his prophetic call at the same uh, year, at the same age that the Jewish males would uh, uh, enter the priesthood at the age of 30. As he became a priest, God made him a prophet. Ezekiel was taken to Babylon from Jerusalem in the second deportation under the reign of Kim, uh, King Jehoi Jehoiachim. And uh, this was in around 597 B.C. And uh, he was born and raised uh, in the land of Judah and was preparing to become a priest when the Babylonians attacked and carried him along with 10,000 others captive to Babylon. Isn't it amazing how life can alter your plans? He's getting ready to go into the priesthood and the, the, the Babylonians and the Nebuchadnezzar attacks and he's deported. And from uh, an interesting note is that Ezekiel spent the rest of his life in Babylon. He didn't live to see God set them free and to uh, take them back down to Jerusalem but he did receive visions from the Lord, both of contemporary and future events relating to Jerusalem. He was in captivity, but God dealt with him and showed him things to come. His contemporaries were men like Daniel, Habakkuk, and Jeremiah. Ezekiel was born in 623 B.C. and died at 570 B.C. He only lived 52 years. And his prophetic priestly ministry only lasted 22 years. So he wasn't here very long. But my did God use him. I want to challenge you tonight to make every day count. None of us know how long we're going to live. We have an assumption, most people assume that they have more time than, we actually, than they actually have. Ezekiel certainly made full use of his time. As Jeremiah was preaching to the Jews uh, and he was still in Jerusalem during the first six years, Ezekiel ministered in Babylon concerning uh, Jerusalem. From chapters 4 to 24, Ezekiel preached and demonstrated God's truth as he predicted the approaching siege and the destruction of Jerusalem. 
Now let me set place this in its contextual setting and then we're going to pray over you and God's going to bless. Ezekiel spoke to Judah in chapter 15 and he rebuked them for being worthless. Let me tell you something. When we disobey God, we become useless. Amen. This is why we're going to get right with God. Because every one of us here, anytime you hear a preacher preach about getting right with God, everybody should be happy. Because that means no one in the audience has gone so far that it's too late. See, the Lord wouldn't say, wouldn't send a message about getting right if you're out of time. So, uh, uh, Israel, Judah, was in trouble with God, and Judah became a useless, uh, fruitless vine. If you look at chapter 15, and it's a very short chapter, he says to them, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is the vine tree more than any tree, or uh, than a branch which is among the trees of the forest. He simply asked him, what makes the vine tree any more special than any of the other trees of the forest? Now, Judah was the vine. And he wanted to know, what is it that distinguishes you, Judah? He says, uh, because see, here's the thing. Judah failed to become fruitful. Judah failed fail to do what the Lord says. So the Lord says, uh, what value is there in this vine? Shall the wood be taken thereof to do any work or will men take a, a pen of it and hang any vessel thereon? That is, can you take the wood from a vine tree and use it for anything other than being wood uh, that's a part of a vine to bring forth. And the answer is no. It's not strong enough to cut it and use it to make a pen where you can hang something on it because the wood is too soft. It's not as strong as the wood is in the, with other trees and stuff. So the wood of a vine, its only use is to help the vine become fruitful. Now, if the wood of the vine doesn't produce fruit, then that wood is worthless. So he says, you can use oak, you can use maple, you can use palm, you can use other wood, but you can't use the wood from a vine because it's too soft. It's useless. Are you with me? He says in verse 4, behold, it is it is cast into the fire uh, for fuel. He says, and then what he's saying here is, and what if you take that wood from the vine and you char that wood? If the wood is no good uh, without being charred, it's certainly nothing if you take it now and char it. And he, what he was doing was he was comparing Judah to worthless, useless wood. Let me tell you, as a church, when we fail to carry out the mission of the church, then we become a useless church. Pastors, when we fail to reach souls, when we fail to tell people about Jesus, when we fail to agree with God on every issue, then our church becomes useless. Amen. Our churches, and notice this, when a church fails to obey God, the question becomes, well, what is that church then good for? The answer is this, nothing. See, if we don't glorify God, we're wasting time. If we don't promote Jesus, we're wasting time. If when we come together, all we do is glorify each other and lift up man and pat each other on the back and talk about how great we are, but we fail to tell the world about him, then we're out of money. We've, we've used up a whole chunk of time. We've been sitting around wasting time. I hold that many churches today are vine wood. 
They won't speak to the issues of the time. Won't stand and cry loud. Won't, won't, uh, don't want to suffer any persecution. Praise the Lord. We just, we want everybody to love us and everybody to like us. But let me tell you, the preacher whom everybody loves, the preacher whom everybody likes, he's that useless vine wood. Huh? Praise the Lord. And, and let me tell you, when you get like that, you have to worry about Satan. God sets his face against you. God does. And this, this is, this is a, a precious moment in history. Praise the Lord. And, and I believe this. Church, this is still our time. Now, now we've missed many moments. We've missed many moments. I remember one, one moment that comes to my mind that we missed big time. We missed it as a church when Farrakhan had his Day of Atonement. We missed it. It was an opportunity for the black church to stand up and declare to the world that no man whose God is not the God of the Bible can summons us anywhere. Instead, 80% of the people who were at that million man march were professing Christians. History will record that I was not there because his God is not the Lord. And it gave me an opportunity. Somebody ought to shout something. It gave me an opportunity to be persecuted in the city, to be talked about, and uh, to be called all kind of names. But I'll tell you what, history will record. That I wasn't there. And I'll tell you who took care of me. When men sent the word to me. And they said to me. If you keep preaching against Farrakhan. All the men are going to leave your church. And your church is going to empty out. I said if they leave because I cry out against a man. Whose God is not the Lord. Then let them go. But I believe this. I believe if I stand. The Lord will stand with me. I want to say to you, don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. You miss your moment when you waffle. And when you try to be politically correct. And when you take down when it's time to stand up. I want you to know one of the passages of scripture that stays on my mind is Jesus said this. If you are ashamed of me. Before men, I will be ashamed of you before my Father, which is in heaven. Are we going to have church a little bit here? See, because I, I, I done got the official day stuff out of me, and now I feel like preaching. See, listen, listen, listen. There's a cost, there's a price associated today with standing for Jesus. Because society has shifted. We're living in a day where men will not endure sound doctrine. We're living in a day where people enjoy being lied to. We're in a day where a man can mutilate his body and call himself a woman and you will go along with that. We're in a day where we've redefined marriage and now you see two men claiming that they're in the same relationship that me and my wife is in. The devil is a liar. You can call it what you want to, but it is not what Pam and I have. God sanctioned marriage. And if we're going to be useful, we got to agree with God. Somebody shout to the God of the Bible and tell him, Lord, I agree with you. Pastors, we got to come down on the God side of things. The Lord is always right. Always right. The hip hoppers won't like it. Praise the Lord. But we still got to stand. We got to tell our boys. Don't miss your moment. Tell our boys. Take them earrings out of their ears. Tell our boys. Don't get your body all tatted up. Tell our boys. Pull up your pants. Good God Almighty. Tell our young men. Straighten up. Tell our men. You know, you know one of the curses of the last eight years I don't want to mess you up today. Of Obama was that perversion broke out. O Obama made it fashionable to be a homosexual. Praise the Lord. And look at how it broke out in our community. Blacks were the leading holdout. If there was any group that wasn't for that, it was us. But he led us and we followed because 
we missed our moment. We became soft wood. Praise the Lord. We didn't want to offend because of color. But sometimes, saints, you got to stand against your color. Sometimes you got to stand against your mama. Sometimes you got to stand against your daddy. Sometimes you got to stand against the powers that be. And let me tell you something tonight. It's not courage if there's no danger involved. It's not courage if there's no harm involved. Anybody can stand and be politically correct and argue something where they know that they're not going to get hit. But man, when God calls you to speak and you know that you might get hit and you stand and speak anyhow, the glory of God. Somebody shout something tonight. The glory of God will come down. Let me tell you something, preachers. God has established your church, churches to be a standard bearer. God has raised you up for such a time as this. You want to you want to see your church grow? Give God a reason to keep it in business. And and, and listen through the lean times, because sometimes when you preach the truth, I know, oh my, they'll walk away. When they walk away, say to yourself, that's an acceptable loss. Let them go. Let them go. Be like Moses. Moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of God uh, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Uh, what do you think Moses would have done? Where do you think he would have been had he not refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter? I'll tell you where he would have ended up. Uh, his soul would have been in hell and his name and reputation, he probably wouldn't be discovered. He would probably be some uh, hieroglyphic in some undiscovered um, tomb, in some pyramid somewhere, still in the dark, written somewhere in a wall where no, nobody had discovered him yet, and here is where Moses is. But because he chose to follow God, I don't care where you go in the world, when you say Moses, he don't even need a last name. When you say Moses, everybody knows who you're talking about. When you say Moses, everybody knows who it is. Why? Because he didn't miss his moment. This is our time. This is our time. But when I talk about our time, I'm not just, I'm not just talking about our time to have. Everybody wants that. Our time to get a bigger house. There's nothing wrong with that. God's going to give houses. Our time to get another car. Nothing wrong with that. God gives cars. But I'm talking about our time to make a difference. Our time to make a dent. Our time to affect lives. Oh, my Lord. Somebody shout something to Jesus. God raised up the prophet Ezekiel and he told Ezekiel to do something that Joel Osteen won't do. He says, as a matter of fact, he don't believe that this is a part of his calling. Look at what God said to Ezekiel. He said, Ezekiel calls Jerusalem to know her abominations. Oh, saints, we are called to call the nation. We need to let America know about her abominations. From, from when the sun rose this morning till the time the sun set, 1,876 black babies have been aborted today. Over 4,000 black and white, Hispanic and others throughout this country. And many times we say nothing about it. We spend our time talking about things in many cases. You know, I'm the same preacher. Uh, somebody told me the other day, they said, don't change. I told them I don't know how. Praise the Lord. If you think... That becoming the, the jurisdiction of prelate is going to all of a sudden alter my uh, message and I'm going to become, you know, the mind of God. You can forget that stuff. I don't know. I don't. Uh, that's, too, that's too effeminate for me anyway. But, and, and, and listen, too many, too many are dying. Too, too many are being slaughtered. Since 1973, the entire population, you want to know how many black folk are missing? Just blacks alone. Just blacks alone. The entire population of the state of North Carolina. It, uh, our state has about 20, 20 million people in our state. We've aborted that many. That's that many of us missing. And we say very little. It's time to cause this nation to see its sin. It's time to stand up and tell the politician, the preacher, tell the Democrats, tell the Republicans, tell them all, tell them all that on a hill far away, 
stood an old rugged cross. Somebody better shout something in here. Yes, sir. It's time to let America see that it's wrong. It's wrong, AAU. It's wrong on Sunday mornings, church time. Children out there playing soccer, playing football on church time. It's wrong. It's time to say something about it. It's wrong for our ladies to walk around here all ghetto fabulous and showing everything that they shouldn't be showing. It's time to say something. Help me preach it tonight. It's time to show the world. Let me tell you something. You won't get happy on this but we're better than welfare we're better than a government handout good god almighty we have brains we're intelligent we can make it it's time it's time it's time somebody shout something in here tonight somebody shout i can make it Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. We need to say something. There's a war. There's a war in this country. They're trying to minimize the difference between male and female. And women, you ought to join me because the, long, the more they, they accept fake women, the harder they're gonna, it's going to make it for we, real women. Good God Almighty, when America can, can love a man, can get excited over Bruce Jenner, look like, a, look like the devil, a six feet, five inch tall man with shoe, a foot size 13 or 14, walking around calling himself a woman. If America falls in love with that, you real ladies are in trouble. That's why we got to cry loud and spam up. That's why we got to protect our sons and daughters. We got to cry loud and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sin. He said, show them where they're wrong. And then God said, let me, let me give you a history lesson. He said, Israel, I know you are something now. I know that you're established, but you need to know something. I'm God, and I was there in the beginning, and I want you to know something about your origin since you're all of that. He said, let me tell you something. I praise the Lord. I'm almost finished. I, 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 mighty stone, I hear you pushing me. Thank you, sir. He said, let me tell you something. Your, your, your daddy was an Amorite, and your mama was a Hittite. And you came from the land of Canaan. In other words, the Canaanites and the Amorites and the Hittites, they were closely related. They were, praise the Lord, the, the Jebusites who, who occupied Jerusalem before the Jews got it. The Jebusites had it. So he says, I know you're blessed now, but you need to know I know your origin. You ain't from nowhere. You were Canaanites. I made you great. I raised you up. Everybody in here ought to thank God for where you are today. Don't get arrogant. Don't get beside yourself. Don't think you're more than who you are. It's by the grace of God that we are who we are. Now praise him for being so good to you. Hallelujah. Shake somebody's hand and just look at him and tell him I'm not much. Good God Almighty. None of us are as wonderful as people say we are and as we think we are. I have, I teach the men, ministers, I call it, praise the Lord, the 90% rule. <laughs> Once they finish complimenting you, but just subtract 90% from it, and that's that's pretty that's pretty much where you really are. You can't you can't let the devil convince you that you are a, a legend in your own mind and a wonder in your own time. No, sir. No, sir. We are where we are by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Do I have anybody who know I'm telling the truth? By the grace of God. We're not where we are because of the justice of God. We're not where we are because of the judgment of God. No, sir. We're not where we are because of the righteousness of God. Hmm. The Bible says it is of the Lord's mercies. 
mercies that we are not consumed. Nobody is here because they are that wonderful. But the Lord has been good to us. You ought to thank the Lord. Thank you. Uh, he said, let me, let me tell you. Yeah, I, know, I know your mom and your daddy. Uh, uh, am I right? And a Hittite. You wasn't even from pure blood. I reached into uh, the land of the Chaldees and found Abram. And I took a man who was serving a fake God and made you a nation. And he said, and, and, and when you were born, let me talk to you about your nativity. He said, when you were born and the umbilical cord was still attached, God Almighty, and uh, he said it wasn't even cut and neither did they they wash you with water nobody even took praise the lord the uh, the ointment of oil and salt to make your skin smooth and to clean you up can i get a witness back during those times uh, hallelujah it was uh, uh, little girls especially they were unwanted and it was when a girl was born many times they would forsake that child and let that child lay there in its own blood. What a cruel society. And let that child die. And that's what's pictured here. A little girl was born. And the family wanted a boy. And they didn't love the girl. Wouldn't wash her. Wouldn't bathe her. And when the scripture says that it was lying in its own blood. That simply means forsaken by its mother. Mother walked off and left the child. Can you hear that baby crying? And nobody came to its rescue. Child crying out. And everybody, you talking about hard hearts. And they left that baby for dead. Abandoned by its mother. Left for dead. Not even wanted. But I have good news. There was still good news. Somebody shout good news. A good thing happened. What happened? Number one, God said, I pass by. I come to tell you tonight that something good is going to happen to you because Jesus of Nazareth, he's passing. Wow! Oh, he's passing your way. Yeah! Somebody praise him tonight. Hey, Rocky. Rocky, let me hear the praises. Hold the music. place but you know what the news even gets better it got better for the child not only did the Lord pass by but the text said while the Lord was passing by it's getting even better the Lord saw him all I can tell the Lord tonight is I'm so glad you look my way I'm glad that he calls his face to shine upon me aren't you glad that when you were in your sin Jesus looked your way look at what he did to you he saved you he sanctified you he picked you up he turned you around he saw me he saw me at the club and he didn't let that bullet get me he saw me in sin and didn't let the knife get me he saw me when I was wrong. Didn't let me go to jail. He saw some of you when you were in jail. And he brought you out. He saw me. He saw me. He saw me. Did he see you? Are you glad? He saw me. He's 
saw me. But it gets even better. I need about six folk to just leap up and down by faith because I'm not going to tell you what better is yet. I want you to give God a shout in advance. Lift your hands and say, yeah. Mm -hmm. He saw me. Number one, he passed by. Number two, he saw me. But what can be better than that? He saw me and then the Bible says, and he said to me. Passed by, looked at me, and then he spoke to me. Do you remember when the Holy Ghost God hold to you. Do you remember when the Lord laid his hands on you? You found yourself on the altar. You found yourself crying out, saying, oh Lord, save me. Yeah. Did he speak to you? No, won't he speak to you? Praise God for speaking to you. Pass by, saw me, spoke to me, but it even gets better. See, I want the Lord to speak to me. But now, I really want him to say, there's some things I want him to say, and there's some things I don't want him to say. I don't want him to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I don't want him to say, die. I don't want him to say, I'm through with you. That day, the Lord walked by. The Lord saw the nation the Lord spoke to the nation but the question is what did the Lord say the Lord God of the Bible said live live somebody help me We got a few preachers in here. We got a few preachers in here. And you know preachers, we love to preach. We love to preach. Why are my missionaries who love to preach? Well, why don't you grab each other by the hand and use your preaching voice and just preach to each other and say, oh, live. Oh, live. Oh, Live! Yeah! Yes! What, 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 what? What do you mean? Live! It's not just exist. Thank God for existence. It's not simply to be alive. Thank God for it. But I want to say what it means and point this way and then I'm gonna point that way and then I'm gonna point this way and then I'm gonna point over here and over in the amen corner live is reminiscent of God saying be fruitful and multiply multiply I'm releasing a multiply anointing be fruitful and multiply do I have anybody over here who wants to multiply? If you want God to multiply you, let him do it. Let him see your hand. Let him see your hand. Live. Live. Somebody ought to praise God 
for the coming multiplication. Multiplication is on the way. Live. Somebody shout, I'm growing. I'm getting better. This is what the Lord is saying. Better. Better. And she third, not because I'm here, but because he's here. I didn't write Ezekiel. God wrote it. And not only is he going to multiply us, but he, in the text, he takes the baby. And by the time you read verse 8, the baby is a grown woman. The babe, the little girl goes from being a little girl to a full grown lady. So beautiful that he makes mention, brothers, of her breasts. And he makes mention of her hair. She's of the marrying age now. She's a woman. And if you continue to read the text, you would even see why he thoroughly washes her. And he marries her. And he enters into her. And he enjoys her. The Lord wants to take us and wash us and multiply us and cause us to be blessed and to let his power just flow in our lives. Somebody worship right now. Glory to God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him do it. 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 Oh, God. See, I'm going to multiply you tonight. I'm going to multiply you. I want you to live. Live, 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 live. I want you to go home hearing my voice. Live, live, live. Live, 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 live. Live. Live, 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 live. New elders, live. New elders, elders, wives, live. Saints, pastors, churches. God is speaking to us. Oh, God is visiting us. Oh, the Lord, his favor is here. I'll share that on both sides. Glory to God. You've blessed me tonight. God bless you for what you've done. God bless you for what you've done. God bless you for the willingness. God bless you for the ability. You bless the prophet. You shall receive the prophet's reward. The reward of the prophet is the fruit of his mouth. It's what he tells you. I come to tell you that God said, leave. God said, be fruitful. Not fruitless, but fruitful. Dr. Stevens, leave. Be fruitful. God's not through with me. Ah! 